Hi, everybody, and welcome back to this talk about money. And whatever happened to the old days when they said that talking about money was one of those things you never were supposed to do? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't feel any guilt about talking about it because it's something that's with us all the time. Now, in the previous episode, I talked about how uh, it had gotten to the point where the super rich were basically just indulging in money for its own sake, or the pursuit of money for its own sake, turning it into a game, and really have nothing to show for it. Sure, there are lots of physical attributes that they can buy, but as far as the money itself is concerned, there's really nothing more than spreadsheets, and even spreadsheets are more or less rendered in electronic form, so there really isn't all that much to show except to say, here, look, look this is my total this week. Now, I start with that because I'd like to go back in time before we talk about digital technologies. And for those of you who don't know, in the Northeast of the United States, in the colonial days, in the uh, 17th century, the European settlers would deal with the Native Americans by giving them the currency that they would use, which was called wampum. Some of you may be familiar with wampum jewelry. It's, it's made from the shell of the Quahog clam. And uh, it, it was an accepted form of exchange, and in fact, the Europeans would make some of that themselves to get from the Native Americans whatever it was they were interested in getting, and then they would exchange those goods for European currencies and build their wealth that way. Now, I don't think that any of you out there would be willing to accept wampum jewelry as payment for anything, and nor should you. However, it isn't all that different from those spreadsheets to which I alluded before, because like those spreadsheets, it's based on a very tenuous notion of value and rarity. In the case of wampum, at least it's limited to the number of clams that you can find. But with a, a spreadsheet, there's nothing. Now, I wanted to talk about digital technology in relation to all this because things like NFTs and crypto are really just the most uh, obvious and out in the open examples of this. And by concentrating on that, it, it makes it look like this is really just an issue for the wealthy. But in fact, all of us participate in this. It's become so much a part of our daily expectation that we do it without thinking. We charge everything, maybe on a credit card, maybe on the debit card, whatever, but less and less do we use cash. And even when we use cash, it's based on an account off there, out there somewhere. Uh, and you don't really have any direct control over that except through yet more digital manipulation. Now, the interesting thing about this is that although, yes, it's all highly electronic and artificial, um, there is still a real world consequence to it. I don't think I need to belabor this. So, for example, let's say I have only $50 and I buy $100 worth of groceries and the cashier looks at me and says, you have insufficient funds to pay for this. Now, First of all, the question is, what does this even mean, insufficient funds? Because you're put in the position of someone uh, like, who's like a victim of slander. You basically have to prove that this is not true. Second of all, what does it mean, insufficient funds? Well, obviously, if I've bought $100 worth of groceries and I have only $50 in my account, then that's insufficient funds. But here's the question. All right, so there's a $50 difference, but what is the $50 that I do have? How is that any more real? It isn't. It's just as arbitrary, it's just as socially determined, which gets us back down to the nuts and bolts of what money is about. It isn't about wealth, really. It's about power. It's what you do with the wealth. And that, of course, is the difference between whether or not I have dinner tonight or not. That's real-world consequences dealing with this abstraction that none of us, even the wealthiest, do not have any control over. So... When I talked about inflation, I talked about how well, the consequences of what happens if you lose that sense of shared value. And digital technologies take that one step further because, as I said in, in the previous episode, it, it's so arbitrary, especially with wealth that's based on digital technologies themselves. It's like, where, where is it? What, what is this about? And sure, 
using digital tools is a process as as true as say forging steel but unlike forging steel when it's all done you have you have something to show for it with digital technologies what do you have to show for it again except for that electronic record which means you have the ability to translate that electronic record into another electronic record somewhere in all of this the basics of life get lost which is why when i talk about it in terms of being able to eat dinner tonight. That's to bring it back to that. That's what we're really always forced to deal with is the reality of and how it affects us in a daily sense. So by focusing on the power aspect of money, I want to look forward to the next episode where I'll be talking about the influencer. That's it. I hope you got something out of this one. Please like and subscribe if you're so inclined and I will talk with you later.